So now I'm about to demonstrate some of the record and replay uh, features of the instrument. So here I have the instrument with just a simple pencil probe connected to the Limo 00 socket and a basic test block with three different size slots in which you may or may not be able to see but you soon will with the any current signal. Okay. So I already have a setting stored on the instrument which is good for this probe. So I'm going to go to load and save. I have a 500 kilohertz absolute probe. I shall load that in. Okay, I'm skipping through some of this because I'm going to focus on the recording and replay. So let's make sure that the probe is working. So we'll do click balance. So here we have, we can see that data is coming through on the time based display there. Right. So I'm going to check the, uh, get the persistence. That second is my favourite. Let's see if we can the screen. So, again, you can see on the time based display here that we do have three different peaks as I go across. Now we don't have to worry about the fact the data could look a lot better at the moment because I'm going to record some. So from here I want to add, first of all add record and replay to my quick menus on the left here. Okay, I don't really want gain, so I should remove gain. So add record and replay. There we go. So now we have record and replay, I'm going to open the record and replay toolbar. Again we have data coming in. So I'm simply going to move to the right, to uh, the red, which is now a white surface highlighted, and begin recording. So I'm just going to record slowly, just a test block, with, uh, just a few times. A few things to, to notice here. As we are live recording, we have a little rotating circle in the corner, and also we have a time in seconds of uh, the amount of recorded data. Okay, so I'm now going to stop the recording. So now I can click play. So now what I do with the probe is irrelevant. This is the recorded data being replayed. Now I can press, press the back key, which will then hide the record and replay bar. So now the instrument is identical to uh, as if you're taking real time data. So from here, again, we now have the circle here to indicate that we are playing data and it isn't live. I want to add panes to my sidebar. So I should remove, load and save, add panes. Oops, lots of panes there. So again, I can now change what we are looking at. So, the time base, like a waterfall display, again, the, the same data that would record is now being played but displayed differently. I can add a time base to there. So, you need to display more. Again, let's try and make the data a bit more, a bit easier to see. So we can increase the gain. Again, as you can see, the, the signal is getting larger as I increase the gain. Let's clear the screen. Hopefully, the recorded data has come back around. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, there was a few pauses in the data, and that was the uh, the time that I was talking and recording. If I bring back the record replay bar, we don't necessarily want to see all of the data, which is, again, we have a, I guess, equivalent to a progress bar moving across here, and it is showing us what portion of the data we're currently looking at on the screen. So if there's a particular point we want to look at, so again, we have a nice trace, so let's play a bit further. So there's an interesting point around here. 
So I can move the cursor to the stop bar and move it in. Okay, to the start bar. So now only the data between these two points is going to be played back from the recording. So now I can now close that. Yeah, I can still go and edit any other values. So let's put this back onto the base plane display. I can change I can change the phase of the data. As you see, the angle of the defect is making is now changing as I rotate. So the user has complete control of the data. So it's a very useful way of being able to record data and then worry about the uh, gain phase and the filters afterwards. So finally, you may have a recording and you think it is uh, useful data. There's two options. You have a, a cross to close the recording and lose the data that's being recorded. Or we can simply go to the disk, which will save the recorded data. So we'll click on the disk, enter a file name, simply call it test1, use the back key to exit, so it does take a few seconds to save the data. That data is now saved. If I now switch off the instrument and I press the left button to save the, uh, any changes to this setting, okay, I can now turn on the instrument. <coughs> Go to record and replay. Oh, wait, sorry, excuse me, I'm going to load and save. The setting I was using was the 500 gilohertz abs, and I see there's a red square in the corner which indicates there is an attachment which is doing a, a data recording. So if I load this slot in, I go to attachments, the test one recording that we performed earlier is present. So I can now open that recording. Again, goes to the uh, real-time screen and displays the record replay bar across the bottom, and I can play the exact data that we recorded in the previous session. Uh, a few other little features actually speed up the data if you're looking for a particular point within the data file you can uh, go through a bit quicker slide that down again you can go much slower you can pause at any particular point to view the data and you can jump back to the beginning and that concludes my quick demonstration on record and replay